Okay, let's let's do this. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for a webinar from Engagement to Enrollments hosted by Meta and Northern Commerce. I'm quite excited for the content today. We'll be covering new ways to reach your prospective students, um, in addition to ways that you can really stand out from the competition. We'll start with a quick round of introductions. So I'm Brooke, Senior Director of Marketing Services here at Northern, and I'll be hosting the webinar today. I'll be closely monitoring the questions tab, which is located in the bottom right of your screen. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to throw them over to me. Um, we have reserved some time at the end for open Q&A, so we'll be sure to address them at that given time. And then as for our presenters, we have from the Northern team, Brent, our Director of Performance Strategy, and Javier, Digital Advertising Team Lead. And then joining us from Meta, we have Mika and Brian, both account managers for the Global Business Group. For our agenda, um, we have lots to cover. So we'll be starting with outlining optimal performance strategy and what that looks like, followed by a deep dive into how to establish winning creative. Then Meta is going to take it over and display some best practices for account consolidation to get your campaigns out of the learning phase as soon as possible. Um, and then also a testing framework and how to apply it. And then we'll end with a Q&A section. I know that there was a couple of questions that came in yesterday. Thank you so much for those ones. Um, we definitely have some time at the end to uh, address those. So I'm gonna hand it over to Meta. And they're going to kick off the presentation with the key pillars of a strong performance strategy. Awesome. Thank you, Brooke. Um, so looking at creative diversification, um, creative diverse diversification can be defined in multiple ways. Here we present a framework highlighting four key pillars that focus on two overarching categories, creative product adoption, like new formats, placements, and mediums, and creative concept diversification, like visual messaging, creative content, style, and concepts. Formats and placements. Everyone uses social media differently. It is more important now than ever to account for different viewing behaviors by using a wide range of asset types to guarantee that consumers with various behaviors can be reached. Messaging. Based on the goals that you set as a team, keep your messaging to the point of what is a desirable outcome. I'm sure you've all heard this from your meta reps before, but make sure your ads meet your audience where they're at in their decision funnel. Creative styles. Does the creative that you put out provoke a sense of FOMO? Using a variety of creative styles, showcase your institute as one that will attract parents and students to want to learn more and discover all that you offer. Consolidated structure. So much work gets put into getting these ads live and in front of your audience. Don't waste that by getting them stuck in the learning phase because your account structure keeps ads from seeing significant results. As you will see on the next slide, a simplified structure has proven to reduce CPAs and increase overall efficiencies. The proof is in the data. Creative diversification is a proven tactic that drives increased efficiency and incremental reach. The reason that this is so important to EDU clients is ads with diversified creatives can have up to a 32% improvement on CPAs and a 9% improvement on incremental reach. So why does creative matter? Creative matters because in today's incredibly challenging and populated marketing environment, you have the opportunity to take back control and be more proactive in meeting your audience where they're at in their decision process through the meta auction, which will be shown on the next slide. Our platform is driven by an auction system and this formula shown here is what is used to determine how and when we serve an impression. I, I tell my higher ed clients this all the time, but, create, but creative has a huge influence on two major components of the meta auction. The first is in estimated action rates. What's the likelihood that an impression shown to this person will lead to your desired result? The second is user value. How interesting do we think this individual is going to find this ad? And is it a high quality ad? Effective creative can generate a positive impact on action rates, increasing by up to 50% and user value by 10%. On the other hand, Keep in mind that poor creative can have a negative impact on both as well. The total value in the auction influences the competitiveness of the advertiser's bids 
and ultimately impacts how much you end up paying for an ad. This is why effective creative is critical to ensure success in the meta auction, which we will see on the next slide. Creative is the single most important factor in delivery optimization, and it is critical to determining the audience you'll reach or the price you'll pay. 56% of the auction outcomes we just talked about can be attributed to creative. I discuss this on calls a lot, but of all the things that you can control in our system, like setting your bid, picking the audience that you'll target and so on, those are not as important as getting the creative right. All in all, creative optimization is a key lever to drive your, driving your results. Again, the proof is in the data. Effective creative drives lower cost per unit ad recall, lower cost per website conversion, and lower cost per app installs. I'm now gonna hand it off to Javier to discuss higher education trends. Thanks, Brian. So as we take some of this creative insights into the higher education space, uh, we're gonna be highlighting, uh, as Brian mentioned, some of the higher ed trends as it pertains to decision-making and why it's important that we talk about, uh, as, about all this as we go from engagement to so as an agency, we have ample experience in this space as we have a large roster of clients in the U.S. and Canada, and we're often working with higher ed clients, not only with pay media efforts, but also with user research and website development. So through this work, we've been able to um, highlight three key priorities. So the first one is uh, around proximity. So um, students definitely value in terms of proximity uh, what's going to be within a limited catchment area, especially undergraduate students, uh, whereas our graduate students tend to be willing to travel. Price is another key influencer here. So of course, this includes opportunity to expose avenues that can offset the price, including loans, grants, bursaries, and awards. And then um, potential in terms of data is extremely important. So students definitely seek success metrics, such as um, the success in terms of finding work after the graduation, what the ranking is for the uh, institution they're applying to, and uh, some other key data points there. So in terms of messaging and other uh, key pillars for creative, we're going to be reviewing three key pillars uh, to establish within creative. So for the first pillar, we're gonna, I'm going to hand it over to Brent. Awesome. Thanks, Javier. Um, yeah, so we're going to jump into pillar one of performance creative and how to add more diversity into your creative mix. And that is done through formats and placements. So probably the first and really the most essential step in terms of adding diversity into your creative mix is to ensure that you have both video and static image uh, creative running within your meta campaigns. Both these ad types serve different purposes in your account. From a video perspective, it's often a very powerful way to tell a story, showcase potentially a specific program or faculty, and really just a dynamic way to engage with your audience, which is going to elevate overall brand awareness. On the other hand, static image ads can be really effective at showcasing a specific message, again, can be around a specific faculty program or course, but it can often be paired with a really effective CTA in terms of driving um, results, so improving your DR efficiency. So by having both video and static image ads within your campaigns, you're really going to unlock the benefit from both and see that overall improvement to efficiency. And this is what we find time and time again when working with higher ed clients. So a study done by Meta actually found that 9 out of 11 or 82% of campaigns that run both image and video ads within see a better brand lift in comparison to campaigns that only run image ads. Um, an institute that we've worked here with at Northern, Ivy Business, um, we have basically found that when we implemented both video and image ads into their campaigns, a 4x improvement to their cost per lead when we started using this tactic. And we have an example to showcase um, this here where we can see we have their static image ad and then we also have a video example, which we'll preview a bit of now. Ivy is a phenomenal place, just been truly transformational in my career. It's a program that you get out of it what you put into it. Everything there exceeded my expectation. Faculty was amazing. It's really the people, the connection. 
So we're not going to watch the whole thing, but definitely get the idea from that, the power that video can have around storytelling, and then coupled with the image ad here, which has a great CTA paired with it. Um, so next step, once you've uh, essentially added both video and image ads into your campaign, it's time to start thinking about all the different placements that your ads can appear on Meta um, and how to optimize your creative for those placements. Um, this can really be as simple as just ensuring that you have the right size video to pair with story placements, so 9 by 16, or it can really be as advanced as creating specific um, ads for placements like Reels, which are short form videos, typically utilizes like user generated content. So in this case, you might want to create dedicated user generated content for that placement. But what's going to happen once you um, basically optimize your creative for these specific placements is you're going to allow your ads to compete more effectively within those auction dynamics that Brian went over earlier. With that, you're going to see more efficient delivery, so better CPMs, but it's also going to open up opportunity for your ads to reach new audiences. Again, all of this is going to help improve um, your efficiency overall. Um, so we have an example here from Swinburne University. Again, you can see their static image ad kind of optimized for the feed placement. And then they have a video ad um, that is formatted for a story placement, which we can show now. So one other thing to call out on this slide here is that the Reels placement is currently the fastest growing placement um, on Meta right now. So there's a huge opportunity by optimizing your creative for this placement. Sorry about that. Um, as we can see on this slide, um, there's a case study from Babbel where they basically tested adding um, dedicated Reels creative into their campaigns to run alongside their business as usual creative. And from this, they basically found that campaigns that included this dedicated Reels creative found a 55% lower average cost per incremental lead and 11% higher unique reach using Reels. So again, a lot of efficiency and potential to unlock by using these tactics. The last thing that we want to talk about under this pillar of formats and placement is just ensuring that your creative is optimized for mobile placements. Um, likely to no one's surprise here, um, most of impressions nowadays are consumed on mobile devices. So just really important that your creative and your ads are optimized for this. Um, so really it's making sure that your creative is optimized for small screen viewing. So avoid using any like small in intricate details within your ads. Um, making sure that your text is, is concise to the point. Um, and then also just making sure that the creative is sized for vertical viewing. So avoiding those like landscape 16 by nine videos and images. Um, the other thing to consider is just the audio too that you're pairing with the creative. So a lot of times when people are viewing ads on their feeds, they won't have their audio automatically turned on. So make sure that your creative is optimized for sound off viewing. But when we look at placements like reels and stories, a lot of time uh, users will have their audio turned on. So make sure that when we're looking at those placements, we do include um, audio. Um, also on the slide, you can see we have kind of a mobile first checklist. Um, I, we have an example here of, of an ad that kind of covers a lot of this. So we'll kind of look at this as an example first. And this is um, a brand that we've worked with here at Northern. Um, they're called NCSA. Um, and this is creative that we designed specifically for them. So as you can see, the video is relatively short under 15 seconds, we were utilizing the four by five aspect ratio, optimizing for that vertical um, screen. Uh, the brand was obviously highlighted throughout the video. Um, in this case, we're obviously using video, but kind of showcasing it with like static animation. Um, we had the product uh, very visibly in the ad where we had the phone that kind of showcased um, what it looks like. Um, and then the messaging paired with it um, was very kind of clear, concise, and to the point. Awesome. And with that, I will hand things back to Javier to go over messaging. Awesome.
Thanks, Brent. So the second pillar uh, from a creative perspective for a successful creative is definitely messaging. So to talk about messaging, we definitely have to understand the student evaluation process and sort of like the journey the students go through before they make a decision. And this journey really follows a very similar structure, whether you're an undergrad student, um, you're applying for a master's or really looking for a specific program or course. And it has three key sections from evaluation to validation and to action. And in the evaluation section is like typically when students are asking themselves questions about the content of the program itself. Um, personally, I had to go through a similar process recently when I was looking uh, for uh, a leadership program. And it was a fairly similar journey in terms of evaluation. So one of the questions that I did ask myself was like, do you have what I'm looking for, right? Like what are the contents of the programs, the courses, who's teaching it? Like, are they like qualified to do it? Are these good profs and whatnot? Sort of like the degrees that they would have in general and the overall success rate for students uh, for undergrads and graduate programs as well. Validation kind of talks about the emotional component. So uh, what support do you offer? So of course, uh, this is something that students, and I also ask myself like, you know, in terms of academic support, mental health support, and the community uh, component is something very important. Am I gonna fit in in this community? What are some of the recent grads that have taken this uh, program doing? Um, financial support is also something that people uh, who are going through this student evaluation process go through. Um, they obviously are going to ask questions about financial support once they, they are signed off on um, the contents of the program, like what's kind of like the living situation, uh, if you have to move into the, the school and whatnot. And once those two stages are completed from evaluation and validation, the action phase comes in, right? Like, so how do I apply? What's the application process like? Uh, so really the importance here is to make it simple. Students are looking for a quick and easy uh, way to convert. So this journey is typically not linear and the duration can vary depending on the program. So for like undergrad programs, it can take a few years. Uh, for shorter courses, like the one I was taking, it was like a fairly short journey. But what's consistent is that across this journey, there's definitely multiple touch points. And for higher education uh, institutions, what we find is that the vast majority of people within the target audience that they're going after uh, is younger people, especially for undergrad. So there's some challenges that come with that. So if we go to the next slide, the main challenge here is that we're really engaging with an audience that doesn't want to be marketed to. And on top of that, within the meta ads platform, there's some legal regulations in terms of targeting. We can really add interest-based parameters for targeting for people under the age of 18. So based on those two challenges, we have two very big opportunities. And the first one is around effective creative. So across all of our higher ed clients, what we really have to do in terms of communicating things for an audience that doesn't want to be marketed to is to come up with video content and image and creative content in general that does not feel like an ad. So that is definitely key. And then the second point is really using or leveraging your creative as your targeting. So in lieu of, of specific targeting parameters, creative is your biggest, your biggest lever. So in terms of targeting, we can use creative as our targeting itself and then let the platform sort of like find the right people who are going to respond to the creative in the best way. We've selected a couple of examples here uh, from uh, Arizona State University and uh, University of Technology on the right to kind of like showcase a little bit of like how a couple of advertisers have navigated uh, going about um, marketing to an audience that doesn't really want to be marketed to. So we can play the video to showcase that a little bit here too. video is trying to do is sort of like mimic what a reminder on your phone would look like, right? So like that can kind of catch the attention of people looking at it. And on the right, uh, it showcases very directly uh, social causes, which are certainly extremely important for some of the target audiences that we're going after. 
So um, moving on to uh, kind of like how to structure messaging in general. Uh, with Meta, we've put together a bit of a framework in terms of how to increase ad quality with creative optimization. And we have like three key points for messaging ideas. So at a high level, it's important to build trust to drive action with your message, to leverage on the discovery mindset of people that like tap into their curiosity, and then inspire through lifestyle, showing lifestyle images and kind of like what we saw in the previous example. Ads that showcase people doing things that would be familiar with what the audience um, values or like what they're doing in their personal lives tend to have a very strong impact from a messaging perspective, perspective, even if it's not directly related to the main message that we want to convey. And then to bring those three key um, messaging ideas to execution, we have highlighted three key things that we sort of use like checklists for like what a successful ads should typically have, especially in the higher ad space. So the first one is showcasing a benefit, being very direct about what the benefit of the ad would be. The second one is including the message on the visual, and this one is extremely important, especially for videos and images. And the third one here is make it simple for the right people. So making sure that we're very concise and clear on what our call to action is. We have a couple of examples on the next slide of how a few advertisers in the higher ed space have uh, done this successfully uh, through showcasing a benefit. For example, on the first one, this is a video ad that uh, specifically communicates that the tuition, the tuition has been reduced by nearly 20%. So there's certainly a benefit that can catch the attention of people looking as it, at this ad. The second one is another ad that also kind of like showcases a benefit, but the message is on the visual. So this is a simple image ad that has a very direct message on what people can uh, sort of like obtain after applying uh, to this specific institution. And the third example here is also another uh, institution in the higher ed space that has a call to action that's extremely clear and sort of like resonates with the audience. They can almost like self-identify a little bit by looking at this uh, ad here. And the key point is like, it's uh, a summer made affordable sort of like tuition uh, space. Internally, um, because we have the opportunity to work with a number of different clients in the higher ed space, uh, we have also done this for our clients. So we wanted to showcase an example that kind of like taps on all these three key points within the same ad. So this is an ad for NCSA that we created. This is a carousel ad that has the three key points for including the message on the visual, showcasing the benefit, and having a direct call to action that makes it super simple for the right people. And what we find um, a number of different higher ed clients that work in the pay media space is that different things are gonna work for different clients. So for example, uh, when we wanna create a sense of urgency, we've seen the carousel ads, such as the one that we have here, tend to have a very high engagement with people when we use uh, words like such as apply today or starts now and allow people to kind of like navigate through the images. We've also seen that with younger audiences, for example, especially for undergrad programs, video content tends to have extremely high engagement rates, especially uh, vertical video content, as Brian was mentioning in uh, the previous section. So different things are going to work for different clients and different higher ed institutions. But what we like to do is test a number of different formats for the same creative. So we created, for example, this creative on a carousel ad format, but also in a video ad format, a vertical video. And then we allow the platform to sort of like run that and test it for different audiences in terms of performance. And then the platform itself is going to deliver the best results and show the ad to who's more likely to take action. Uh, and then we wanted to wrap up the second pillar in terms of messaging with a bit of a checklist uh, that we have created that's specifically customized for the higher ed sector specifically. So six key things that when we're crafting a messaging around um, paid media, especially for social, that we should always uh, try to have within our campaigns. So the first two are sort of like table stakes in terms of costs and application deadlines and timing. So there are things that like, obviously we always wanna to try to communicate, but the last four on the right are sort of like things that like are very important for our audiences, especially like undergrad audiences, which is kind of like what we wanna 
highlight a little bit today is so diversity. So obviously people want to see themselves represented in the content. They want to see people who look like them and have similar backgrounds. And the next one is sort of like very connected to that, which is experiential representation. So students don't really want stage diversity image. They want to see what they'll actually be doing uh, in their institutions. So if they're in workshop, labs, et cetera, they want to see visual representation of that. Uh, the next one is social responsibility. So as we saw in one of the examples, this is something that this audience is like really value. So community is a big component and like what is the institution doing to differentiate themselves from others from a social responsibility standpoint. And the last one, of course, is the expected outcome. You know, how long, how much is this going to cost? What am I getting out of it? Am I going to fit in? Some of the other questions uh, that students ask themselves through uh, the journey that we were seeing before. So with that, I'm going to hand it over back to Brent to go over the third pillar for Credo. Perfect. Um, yeah, so the third pillar that we want to talk about today is creative styles. Um, so yeah, creative styles is another uh, great way to add more diversity into your campaigns. And when we're talking about creative styles, this is where we're talking about the visuals, the tone, and overall feel of the creative. So we know that not a single style of ad is going to speak to every single person within your target audience. Some people might engage more with, um, you know, more of that like UGC style of ad, whereas others are maybe more looking for the hard facts, maybe something along the line of like an infographic ad. So by creating a diverse set of creative styles within your campaigns, it gives you the opportunity to engage with everyone in your target audience, which is going to improve overall engagement rates, but also also improve your ability to reach and scale your campaigns as well. Um, so when it comes to the higher ed space, there's some styles of creative that we want to call out um, that we think are, are good to leverage. The first one being just lifestyle imagery within your creative. So basically using people and showcasing them using the service or the product in a relatable way. So in this case, it's maybe showing people within classrooms, maybe within labs, or even just showing them at different spots on campus, whether it's cafeterias, those sorts of things. Um, another great um, style is utilizing infographics. Um, this basically works best if you're taking some sort of data point and showcasing it in some sort of visually appealing way. So whether it's a chart, graph, et cetera, I think this one works really well with the messaging that Javier was mentioning around what are the outcomes. So I think if there's any stats around, you know, 99% of graduates from this program are hired within industry within two months would be a great way to kind of show that stat using some sort of infographic. Um, another really popular style or a popular style creative that we see a lot of opportunity and effectiveness from is UGC or user generated content. This is basically getting content from users on the platform specifically. Um, this is typically, you know, not some highly produced uh, video. It's done typically with just like cell phone footage, that sort of thing. Uh, can see really effective results uh, with that style of ad. Uh, other styles are just incorporating campus visuals. Um, and then also considering high production versus low production. So I think this is often a, a misconception we see a lot in the higher ed space where they believe that for their videos to perform, they need to be these very expensive, highly produced um, videos. But we actually see that we can get just amount just like the same level of efficiency by using like a lower production shot. Again, utilizing like UGC videos with cell phone footage can be just as effective. And again, it's not a matter of like high versus low production. It's a matter of that different styles are going to appeal to different people. So it's including both of these styles in your account and then even pairing it with these different um, styles mentioned above. Um, so we have a few examples um, from some universities here. The first one's a, a UGC ad from Carleton University, um, where it's basically a user speaking to the application progress and kind of some tips um, that they found helpful. So you applied to Carleton. Great decision. Here's what to expect after you apply. Be sure to keep an eye on your email for any updates. And if you have any questions in the meantime, book a one-on-one -on -one coffee break or appointment. Keep an eye out on your status on Carleton 360. And also while you're here, check out different Carleton resources. Lastly, check out any missing or requested documents so your application is complete.
In the meantime, click here to learn more. And then we also have a lifestyle ad um, from CUNY. Um, and again, one thing to call out here too, is that these ads are a great example of kind of a, a low production versus a high production video. And they also utilize completely different styles as well. Starting college, I didn't know what I wanted to do. CUNY taught me what my dream job was, then helped me land it. I went from cashier to finance intern to full-time analyst at a top bank all months before my graduation. I'm financing my future and CUNY is the best investment I've ever made. Join me. So you applied to Carleton. Awesome. So um, another thing that we want to call out in terms of an opportunity um, around creative styles is using branded content ads to build trust. So what a branded content ad is, is basically using influencer handles to run ads through. So we have an example from a D2C brand um, on the right here that we work with. So Pulp and Press is the brand that we're advertising, but we partnered with Sweet Mama Life um, and are running ads through their handle specifically. Um, so you might be asking, you know, why are we looking at a, a D to C example um, when we're obviously talking to the, the higher ed space currently? Um, and that's because this really isn't being utilized within the higher ed space currently. Uh, we have a ton of interest from our current clients in the higher ed space, and we are working with them to get them on branded content ads. Um, but it's a huge opportunity, I think, right now to get ahead of your competition, just given the fact that no one's currently utilizing this within your space. Um, what we have found that people who have done strong branded content collaborations can see a 19% reduction in cost per acquisition and a 53% increase to click-through rates. So if this is done effectively, it can unlock a lot of efficiency within your accounts. Um, some ways that higher ed institutes can kind of think about how to go about branded content ads are using things like student influencers. So getting your students uh, to create content and asking them if you can run ads through their handle specifically, potentially leveraging any existing partnerships. So if you have any employers that hire a lot of students from a specific program, it would be great to get branded content from them or even leveraging just faculty. So employee, professors, those sorts of um, people within your institution, if they'd be willing to you know, create some sort of, of ad and then run the ad through their handle. The last thing I wanna talk about here is just around keeping the content fresh in your account. Um, so you can be basically doing everything we've gone through um, so far perfectly. You can have a mix of static image and video. You can be optimizing for different placements, testing variety of messaging and, and have a bunch of creative styles. But if you're not keeping the content fresh in your account, you are going to see performance start to decline. And this is due to what is called creative fatigue. Um, so creative fatigue is basically just the fact that after so many exposures, the ads will start to no longer perform. What Meta found was that after four repeat exposures, you can expect to see about a 40% decline in click-through rates. And then basically for every doubling in the number of repeat exposures, it's associated with another 24% decrease in that click-through rate. This is a, a very common problem we see in higher ed clients um, that we often run into when we start an engagement is that, you know, they might have really good creative, but they're not refreshing it often enough. And that's what's causing them um, to see a lot of inefficiency in their account. And really, it's a great and fairly easy way to improve performance just by getting them to freshen their creative on a regular cadence. Um, so one thing to consider when refreshing your creative is making sure that the new creative that you're putting into the account is sufficiently differentiated from the current creative. If you're just making little tweaks here and there to the existing ads, users probably aren't going to recognize that this is a different ad and they might think it's the same thing. So those ads are going to still be impacted by creative fatigue. So really, this is a great opportunity when you're refreshing ads to look at those different creative styles that we talked about earlier, play with different messaging that Javier called out. And then even if there's certain placements that you haven't started to optimize for yet, maybe start thinking about that. The other thing to consider when refreshing creative is that it shouldn't necessarily be turn off all existing ads and upload a full set of like new fresh ads. Um, it really should be this more of a cycle where you're inserting one or two fresh new pieces of creative 
and then cycling out those ads that are starting to fatigue, maybe no longer getting a lot of delivery or starting to see just overall efficiency decline. And then that way you're kind of constantly have ads that have learning, have engagement within the account. And you're not kind of doing this hard reset where you're pausing everything and refresh and adding in a whole new set of creative. So before I pass things over to Meta again to talk about account consolidation, I do want to take a moment to talk about um, our approach to creative here at Northern. So we often get asked the question of, of where do you start or how do you kick off an engagement? And our approach is really utilizing what we call a performance scorecard, where we basically assess the, the current situation and what creative is currently running in the account or what has historically been running. And then we score it based off of these four categories. A lot of this overlaps with what we've talked about today. So just messaging and content, ad format and mix. We also look at creative aesthetics and then also look at how is the creative specifically performing within the account based off of account structure, objective, those sorts of things. From there, we can kind of get um, a starting score and kind of identify what are the clear next steps or opportunities within your creative to get it to the next level. And is really um, an easy way to kind of lay out a roadmap going forward for your creative. Um, so a lot of times when we're, when we're doing this process, we'll see kind of lower scores across certain categories. And then immediately we identify that this is the opportunity and what we need to get up to par. And then once we've done that, it's like, what's the next step across these categories? Um, awesome. So with that, I will hand things over to Mika. Awesome. Thanks, Brent and Javier. Love those uh, creative pillars. Now let's jump into the key to driving efficiency, consolidation. Not all factors are created equal. Some are more important in influencing impact and ROAS than others. More importantly, not all factors are within a brand's control and change. Market factors and long-term uh, brand factors shown on the left here have importance in predicting impact and ROAS outcomes, but they can take a long time uh, to change and are not fully within a brand's control. But luckily, more than 50% of performance is driven by factors within a brand's control. On the right, you can see the main activation factors that affect performance. Creative excellence and execution are two of the biggest factors in what can drive immediate impact and drive return on ad spend by 54%, along with share of investment. As mentioned on the previous slide, it is a, at least half of the brand's performance is driven by activation factors. This is why we're going to do a deep dive into the executional factors that are at the core to campaign planning. The first order of business is ensuring that we have the right campaign goals that match the business goals. All other decisions flow from this. For placements, the more the better, which you may have heard from your meta account manager once or twice before. We recommend going with Advantage Plus placements or Six Plus uh, on that. We're going to zoom in on consolidation because it's a large focus area for a higher ad strategy. Prioritizing consolidation in campaigns can help ad sets lower CPA due to less time in the learning phase. Also, broadening targeting, keeping consistent media presence throughout the year, and a frequency of about 1.5 to 2x per impressions per week should be incorporated. Now let's take a deeper dive into consolidation. We'll first talk about the learning phase, why it matters, and some of the strategies and actual practices we can use to consolidate and exit the learning phase, reducing costs, increasing efficiencies, and performance. So first, let's begin with the learning phase and why it's key to our performance. The, per the learning phase is a period where the information about every conversion you achieve in the ad set level is to help our learning system determine how to work smarter for you. It begins when you create a new ad set or make a significant edit to an existing one. At first, our delivery system has a lot to learn about your ad set and is exploring the best ways to deliver it. But as our delivery system gets more signals, it starts to work smarter, giving your system more stable conversions in CPA. Ad sets exit the learning phase as soon as their performance stabilizes. Typically, performance stabilizes about when the ad set receives about 50 optimization events within the seven day period. So why does the learning phase matter? Minimizing your time and budget spent in the learning phase has real results. Advertisers who implemented our best practice guidelines and limited spend in the learning phase to less than 20% of overall spend see 68% lower CPA than advertisers with more than 50% of their spend in learning. That translates to the less time you spend in learning, the lower your CPA could be. Consolidate successfully to exit the learning, site, the learning phase. The learning phase is necessary to help the delivery system best optimize ads, so there's no way around avoiding the learning phase completely. 
Here are some best practices to start incorporating into your day-to-day -day media planning to ensure that your ads are set up for the best possible performance. We always recommend you minimize behaviors that prevent ad sets from exiting the learning phase, always beginning with simplifying account structure. When looking at your current and future campaigns, think about where you can combine ad sets for better performance. Running a lot of ad sets means each ad set delivers less often and conversion volumes on each ad set uh, are longer, meaning more time in the learning phase. We'll share some examples of this on the next few slides. Secondly, reducing edits is key. Try to make your inputs to the campaign during its creation and then let it ride. Making edits and optimizations to campaigns, ad sets, and ads will lead to delays and exiting the learning phase. Finally, reduce your setup constraints as much as possible. This means maximizing your liquidity of your setup. Too narrow of audience targeting can deeply impact your ad set's ability to calibrate correctly and reach the right prospective students. Next slide. This is where we can start shifting our strategies and how we use meta in our student acquisition process. Consolidation is recommended to our higher ed partners to make sure their investment is leading to the best possible performance. I think the left, oh, there we go. When there is a large segmentation between ad sets, we are weakening each ad set's ability, ability to calibrate correctly. This is an example of how we can consolidate strategies in an ad account to help reach performance efficiencies. Higher ed partners who move towards consolidation are more likely to see lower CPA overall. Another consolidation strategy would be breaking down campaigns by objective. You may have your campaigns currently split up by program, leading to multiple campaigns per objective. One way to shift towards, um, towards consolidation is to help improve your performance by grouping your campaigns under each objective. This will look differently for every university or school system, but here's an example of how to start thinking about objectives in your ad account. Now I'll pass it back to Brent to help close things out. Perfect. Um, yeah, so before we jump into Q&A, we do just have a few key takeaways from the presentation that we wanna leave you guys all with. Um, so the first one is really just a reminder of the creative impacts on the auction. So as Brian mentioned earlier, creative is really the biggest factor and biggest lever you can pull in terms of influ influencing um, the auction. Um, so optimize your creative using the tactics that we discussed today is really going to lead to better CPMs, um, which is going to improve overall efficiency um, and allow you to compete better within the auction. Number two, uh, creative matters obviously, um, but creative is really the way to engage with your audience. And we know that different members of your audiences are going to engage with different styles, different messages, different formats, etc. So um, when you're creating your ads, make sure that you set up um, a strong creative mix within your campaigns so that you can speak to everyone within your audience. Again, this is going to improve your delivery, but it's also going to improve your overall reach, um, which is going to help you gain more efficiency with whatever objective you're trying to achieve, as well as help you scale your campaigns. Um, and Mika, I'll pass it back to you for the last two. Sounds good. So as we just talked about uh, pretty intensely, consolidation, anywhere you can make this work in your ad account will, will help benefit performance. Reducing the current complexity of your account structure can really improve your efficiency overall. And then fourth, test, 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 test. Utilize Meta's split testing tool to understand creative and consolidation iteration and how it performs best. You can ask us, your account managers, for testing structures and funded opportunities. We'll be happy to help.